All right, guys, today we're going to be talking about just a few knives that I think are truly Alaskan worthy EDC blades. A couple fixed blades, a couple folders, or really pocket knives. And yeah, let's, uh, without any further ado, let's jump right into it. Okay, so I think we're going to cover the fixed blades first, and I feel like there are a lot of applicable um, fixed blades for Alaskan EDC, but ultimately when I kind of think of Alaskan EDC, I think of well-rounded multi-purpose blades that are just good at everything, but are also tough wearing, like really tough as nails, and blades that do have good potential or are predisposed to wilderness use, whether that's starting fires, you know, striking ferro rods, um, you know, tinder collection, potentially batoning, and just really hard case, hard use cases. Because ultimately, at the end of the day, just about any sharp edge, even if it's not even a knife, can cut open a box or package or anything like that. So, you know, it's not, it's much easier to find a blade that's good for those purposes, but it's not as easy to find things that are as well first for the kind of outdoors, off-road, inclement weather kind of situations. So yeah, this is the first one. Of course, I've been handling it a little bit here, and this is the SE3. The SE3, I think, is one of those really well-rounded knives, that whether you're doing bushcrafting, survival training, um, even everyday carry, this thing is just a really well-rounded blade for all of the above. Now, this would probably be best suited to run as a neck knife or maybe on the small of the back with like a tech lock, but this knife is totally EDCable in my opinion. It is pretty darn compact, very thin, very lightweight for an SE, and once again, incredibly durable. Uh, this guy is one that you can literally stand on the edge sideways and it will not break, it will not crack, and uh, yeah, it's just a super, super durable, tanky blade. I've had this SE3 for a very long time and it has never failed me, and uh, uh, yeah, it does not disappoint at all. Okay, next one up for fixed blades is going to be one that is a little bit newer to the collection, and that is a half face blades extremis or extremis mark one. Now I think that this blade now I think that this blade is a really good multi-roll knife. It certainly has a look and appearance of being tactical or more aggressive, maybe defensive. But uh, ultimately, whether it is defense or self-defense or really any other application, while this guy is small, it is very venerable, made out of a pretty solid steel. Um, these come in either S45VN like this guy or S35VN, depending on the model you choose. And once again, that uh, heavily recurved blade and overall small size is going to be very good at doing things like feather sticking and processing wood. But being that this guy is full tang, it is going to be very tanky, very durable, and an overall really awesome little blade and very small very compact once again another one that is very easy to edc this one i have currently set up with its ulti clip so you can just throw this on your belt waistline pocket anywhere you want to snap that ulti clip in and get a good lock in so that is the half face blades extremis mark one Okay, moving over to some pocket knives. This is where things might get a little bit more contentious, but the first one up on my list is the Microtech UltraTech. Now, I have several different flavors of the UltraTech, and of course, the double-edged daggers probably are not the most practical. So going with the most practical that I have, this really nice straight-edged version. Now, this one I have reground or re-beveled, I think ultimately, uh, down to a 17 degree per side angle and it is just extremely sharp. I love how well that turned out, but uh, moreover than this blade being incredibly slicey now that it's been reground, the OTFs, uh, any high quality OTF, whether it's from Microtech, Heretic Knives, even some of the Benchmades are going to be really solid. Um, performers, especially these Microtechs because they use an aluminum chassis. So when this blade is locked up, it is locked up. I mean, you can baton this thing, you can strike the back of it with ferro rods. This is a blade that, you know, once again, a lot of people might think, oh, it's just an OTF, you know, it's not really going to be that strong, it's not going to be that durable, but uh, I have really uh, beaten the crap out of this knife, and uh, it really is a glutton for punishment, but at the same time, too, still looks good, still performs perfectly fine, and is just really one heck of a little knife. These guys are really impressive, in my opinion, for being well-rounded um, Alaskan EDC knives, and of course, because you can carry autos legally in the state of Alaska, 
Okay, the last one up, the dreaded Benchmade Knife Company is going to be the next one up, and this is going to be a full-sized Griptilian. Now, whether it's the 550, the 51, even the 53, um, which is the Tanto version, I believe, um, these guys are really well-rounded knives, and I personally think that the 550 looks the most attractive with its kind of Spider Co-esque design. Mine is unfortunately not the smoothest at the moment, as you guys can see there, but it is a performer nonetheless. And most importantly, these guys are very lightweight, reasonably compact, especially when closed. Now this guy's just making a liar out of me. I swear it was smooth. But uh, ultimately, yeah, these things are reasonably compact when closed and very, very tanky. This one, I mean, I'm sure you guys can see has uh, been tortured over the years and definitely has struck many a fair rod off the back, has been batoned, shown it on many videos. And uh, this one, once again, similar to my OTF, I did um, re-grind or reprofile that bevel. And uh, yeah, it is super slicey once more. And I think that these guys have really only gotten better with age. This is one of the originals in 154 CM, but they now make them predominantly in S30V. Sometimes they have flexes up to even higher quality steels but ultimately the Griptilian is just such a well-rounded knife that can really do anything you want it to. Once again, too, you can push it into batoning and hard use applications and it will perform very well in those in addition. So really a fantastic knife and by no means is it cheap. The Benchmade tax is very real, but uh, as far as the knife goes, it is a performer and it is really venerable as far as Alaskan use cases, especially being flexed into survival situations. Anyways, guys, that is all for now. God bless and I'm out.